Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the uh, the fifth and uh, final hunting episode from Hunting in Hungary. Today is on the last day of the uh, hunting trip and I managed to have my first ever mouflon. A, uh, a younger one presents a really nice shot opportunity and I decided to take it. Mouflon tastes really nice too, by the way, before you're wondering. I uh, highly recommend them. Um, and the uh, you'll see a little bit of humor as well. This very arrow gets lodged into a tree because I had my pin set incorrectly. Feel free to have a laugh at my expense there. But the good news is the exactly the same arrow, exactly the same broadhead actually, um, took the uh, the sheep uh, later on in the day. Couldn't be happier really. But uh, the arrow that uh, took the move along was this one here, J. One more for the road. Um, so Jay, again, thank you very much for your help and support. Um, some of the community members that have been around for a long time um, get their names put on the arrows. And if you're interested in that, send us an email basically. But after we've used the arrows, as long as it's not uh, lost, we send it to them. So yeah. And so uh, this is Jay's arrow that took the mouflon. This is also the head we used. It is a uh, crossbreed by True Blue Broadheads. It's Australian. It's exactly the same one that hit the tree and then took the uh, took the sheep as well and it's still still good as gold. Uh, I put it on the spinner to check it and it's nice. Good little chisel tip on there um, and uh, as you'll see, pretty devastating results. Enjoy. How was it everyone? Monday morning, late start today. Um, put a bit of messing around and stuff and it's absolutely hammering down with rain. We're back here at the Mouflon spot today. We're on the other side from where the uh, tree stand was set up. Um, we're in a blind just because it's, like I say, it's raining so much. Um, poor old Andre stood on a nail before putting the blind up so we're not off to the best start uh, mood wise either and um, I am I haven't done a lot of this but I'm kind of a little bit hesitant to see if this will work or not because the, the sheep are pretty smart and I think they're going to notice a new blind here. Um, so yeah, we'll see what happens. But uh, yeah, just got a weird energy today, weird energy today. But very pumped to manage to get that uh, peak yesterday and we had a nice relaxing night. I actually got back a little bit early and sat in the jacuzzi and stuff so it was good. But yeah, so crossing all my fingers and uh, I think Put it in the Swedes, cross your, your, your thumbs or something, so, yeah, but anyway, let's see what happens today. So, um, the, we just checked the weather forecast and it's supposed to be rain the whole way through until about 4am in the morning. <laughs> so, I'm going to go and go for a walk and see if I can get lucky. Um, hopefully the rain's marks a little bit of my noise it's a bit softer and I can just get lucky basically um, and the, the worst case thing is maybe I push them out of the forests and I come back into the blind later on and we get lucky but uh, yeah uh, neither of us here think it's uh, anything's gonna happen today sitting here basically that you know there's no reason for the sheep to come out into the rain there's a little bit of food in the forest which with all the new growth and foliage there um, so they're just going to try and stay there where it's a little bit drier. Uh, yeah, so I've got the GoPro with me, um, but uh, you won't see any more of this footage because uh, the camera that I've got here is uh, not waterproof uh, and it, it doesn't want to drown. So, yeah. All right, wish me luck. Talk to you when I get back. I'll probably look like a wet dog. Hunting and learning go hand in hand. Sometimes you do more hunting and well sometimes you do more learning. So um, I just put a little stalk on, I came up the hill here um, because there's a feed station over here and I, I snuck in uh, kind of behind those hay bales there and had a look and there was two there, there was a little lamb and a, and a, a ram and the, the ram kind of knew something was going on you know um, and it didn't run too far, it just went kind of you know 
maybe over to that bale. Oops, you can't see because of the. There's a the spoiler. A spoiler here, but anyway, uh, over there. And basically, what happened is the, the lamb was like crazy. And um, I was obviously just by these trees here. Um, and the another one came up the hill here because I heard the lamb going, come around behind me actually, came up and. And then the, made the, the lamb kind of run back this way and then that ram came freaking flying back down here like I guess they try and help the help the lamb out <laughs> and I had them lined up perfectly by this tree here but somebody had their sight set to 40 meters instead of 20 meters and this is the result and Jay can you guess whose arrow it is again bro your arrow mate your arrow so I have to come back with an axe or something and dig this broad broadhead out it's so stuck in there so stuck in there drilling a tree at 20 meters. Good times. Ah! Ah! After witnessing how powerful the lamb's call was to the sheep, I thought I'd give it a go. And while some of this footage is actually from me kicking them towards Andres after I left, a lot of it wasn't some of them came in to the call. It continued to pour down, but we also continued to get visits from smaller mobs of females and young. Surely at some stage soon, something worth shooting would present itself. Not long after this mob disappeared, a young male came in and I decided to take my shot. Even though we know where the sheep is, I think this is a great time to still learn as there's no pressure to find the animal. It means you can really look and study at the blood trail because let's face it, when are you ever gonna get a good chance to look at something like this? It's really, really good blood. Um, and I, I can see it up here too. So 
just going to keep going up and follow it some more so but yeah it looks like a very good hit it's also worth mentioning yeah. that at this stage it's yeah. rained for about an yeah. hour after the shot so you can imagine how good it must yeah. have been when it was fresh That is beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Oh, blessed. Oh. <laughs> First move on. Oh. So, um, this little nasty number did absolutely devastating work. Like the the leg is completely broken, uh, and uh, it's gone through taken out the heart as you can see this um, you know <coughs> slightly caught in a way shot too just came out through the back of it and you know thankfully uh, as I always want any animal to do it expired very fast and the blood trail is very easy to follow too and yeah awesome absolutely wrap with that and uh, it's gonna be a very nice memento for this trip um, really really happy I, again I gotta thank uh, you know obsession bows and uh, Dana at Hunters Friends Europe. Hunters Friend Europe, please guys, give them a uh, uh, you know get, give them all the support you can get. Um, bow hunting in Europe is quite a small you know as compared to if any Americans are watching this. Bow hunting in Europe doesn't really exist too much to be honest. Um, there are obviously lots of people that do it, but it gets a bad rap. A lot of the countries it's illegal in. Um, you know that died so fast there is nothing wrong with bow hunting um, like hunt, rifle hunting when it's done properly right so a rifle and a bow are both tools and if you use them correctly you get good results uh, as you can see here uh, with the mouflon and last night with the boar and the boar was not the best shot and it still went down very fast so um, yeah like it's just we need to educate the public and get people's opinions changed it's a very nice way to die i know that sounds weird but you know blood loss they pass out before they even know they're dead they don't get you know sh smashed up uh and, and there's no none of that that sort of nasty painful stuff like it's just a very quick clean cut and they just bleed out very fast so yeah um and that's just educational too by the way i'm not glorifying or anything or anything like that so yeah but obsession bows ultra view scope uh, crafted archery like these arrows are 700 grains <laughs> there was nothing if i'd hit the the trough it probably would have gone straight through the the feed bin too but yeah i'm over the moon uh, i've got one more day tomorrow um i think we might be trying for a roebuck and some more pigs tomorrow so yeah i'm super duper happy with that and uh oh, yeah i mean we spent under so many like 80 hours in the blind or something now you know um, it's not from lack of trying uh, at all and uh, I'm can't I've said it a million times I'm super happy so we got your first move around and uh, now we're gonna do a, a Hungarian hunting tradition when it comes you know every time you shoot anymore we do this tradition come uh, from a German hunting tradition mm -hmm. and following the same rules basically yes as you saw I uh, took three three branches out yes and uh, individual have his own purpose the first one what we do first is the last food for the animal and that's the first one all the time yeah. the second one will comes to you get any more blood from the the wound what is entered never okay. what is exit yes always from the enter one okay and then the third one we always cover the the wound okay yeah i gotcha so well done thank you very much situation this one is for you thank you and also last thing what we always do yes is we always place the animal on uh, the animal right side yes 
reason being the tradition obviously the heart is in the middle but it's a little bit on the left side yeah for every animal yeah, yeah. so basically in this way the heart is on top and is closer to heaven gotcha so the animal can go to a better place faster if we place the animal yes. in this way i like it i like it I, I really like learning about different hunting traditions and i think it's very uh important people respect it yeah wherever exactly. country you go to you know like maybe it's not how you do things at home but you're in their country and you learn a lot from it too yeah. so it's, it's nice thank you for and there's a lovely that. tradition so yeah and, and it's it's a good way to respect the animal and exactly, stuff, so. exactly. Yeah. so consideration again yeah thank you very much yeah. The evening sit saw us in a great position. It was a feeder that was also close to a water hole. Because there's never been a permanent blind at this feeder, picking a good spot with a good background was vital. So we decided to find a place that had a little bit of midway cover, which is the bushes that you can see just behind me. This would help to break things up if any animals walked in from the right. And then, we got set up. I know I've said it a few times now, but Hungary really is a truly beautiful place. Sadly tonight, no animals came in at all, but boy what a beautiful evening it was. And a good part of hunting is just enjoying nature. George, it's been a really good time dude, I really I'm enjoyed really it. Glad. And uh, it's just, a, I, I had a good feeling about that last spot, but sadly nothing came in and, and it's just hunted sometimes. so. Fortunately, the robots didn't came. We had photos of them. They were there before, so even the wind was good today. But we yeah. were unlucky. I'm really upset about that. But there is always a next time. There is. And hey, this time round, the wind behaved itself, uh, and it made a big difference. We had some rain, but you know that's all good. We we managed to uh, you know get into the blinds and work our way around it. So yeah, it's good. Well, we make uh, made the best out of it exactly exactly um, hopefully next time you come we're gonna have a bit of better weather yeah that's it and we were talk talking about a little bit too is uh if you're seriously uh wanting to pursue uh wild boar you were saying from september through to uh end of november is kind of a, a quite a good window for people to come um, is that right too well i would say for Big male wild boars. Yes. November time when yes. the rust starts. Beginning of December. Yes. Yeah. Obviously, winter time, generally speaking, yes. for boar is better. You know because they have to go to the feeder. Yeah. Like this time of the year is good as well. But when you get uh, the rain, rain, fresh like rain. Yeah. You know they they go. They getting snails, worms, stuff like that. So they can be all over the place a little bit. Yeah. So it's harder to feed in a specific area. Mm -hmm. I got gotcha. you. So winter time, that's why it's better. But this one have uh, its own benefit as well. But yeah. it needs to have a good weather for it to, to for really it to work. Yeah, to work. Yeah. No, yeah. I mean spring's kind of always a bit unstable weather-wise. It doesn't matter yeah. where you are in the world. So it's just kind of what it is, you know. I'm just really happy you enjoyed it. Yeah. And um, before you leave, I was to give you a little present. Okay. Um, you know, in. Uh, I think it was day two it was maybe when we stalked yeah. in the morning okay. and we find these deer antlers. Yes. And I would like to give it to you this one to take it home as a memory of this hunt. Wow, thank you very much. That'd be awesome. We had to make a nice bow rack or something out of that, yes, I think. Definitely. Yeah. definitely. It'll look nice on the wall. Awesome. Thank and you. then maybe we wait a couple of years to this 
rest like to grow and then maybe you can come and <laughs> shoot it. Get the rest of it. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be awesome, man. Hey, I've really enjoyed my time. Uh, me too. I'm yeah. glad you came you and um, hopefully I'll see you soon again. Yeah, that'd be good. Guys, uh, yeah, like I can't speak highly enough you know, of the, of the uh, establishment here. If you want to do some bow hunting in Hungary, come here to HH uh, Hunting Limited and, uh, you know, mention to George that you've uh, seen, uh, seen it on, uh, on the channel that uh, Matt sent you and I'm sure it'll look after you. He's a good dude. So. Yeah, and uh, check out all the links in the description below as well, by the way. Uh, it'll take you straight to his website. Thank you very much, everyone. I'm off to Finland now tomorrow. Uh, and yeah, it's, uh, it's been good times. Cheers. Um, there's one more thing I just want you guys to stick around for, sh show some appreciation to. Andres, who is my you know, tree stand blind buddy for all those, I think like, I think we did like, 85 90 hours or something you know stuck in a blind together i fired a lot you know just gonna put that out there i'm sorry andres but we had we had a lot of good fun and uh, he also did the uh, the rough cuts for these films uh, as well absolute champion of man i'm looking forward to uh, working with you again everybody please hit that uh, subscribe button hit the notification bell give the video a like share on social media see you next week cheers